they say the risk of transmission comes down to a formula, who you're spending time with, how physically close together, and for how long. Dr. Bruce Swords, chief physician executive at Cone Health, says he realizes people are getting antsy to get out and get back to normal. And I understand why people want to go out and enjoy themselves, and that makes perfect sense. We are social beings, and that's what uh, we want to do. And we, there, there's a higher calling right now to keep our community safe. He says there's a way to take part in normal summer activities while keeping the risk low and keeping others safe. Considered lower risk, spending time outdoors, social distancing at the beach, even having a small backyard get together. I think there's ways to do that uh, well. I think uh, in an outside setting, uh, staying away from each other, making sure chairs are uh, away from each other, you can do that safely. On the other end of the spectrum, Dr. Swords says higher risk activities include indoor church services, weddings with a lot of people, a bar scene, even getting a haircut. It's very hard to get a haircut and be socially distant. If you're thinking like the virus, the, the more time you spend in a place, the more exposure you're going to have or the opportunity to pick up a virus. So. Time in space is important. Dr. Bob Strack, a public health professor at UNC Greensboro, says it's also important to consider who you'll be around when planning activities. What the people around you are doing matters and paying attention to those people that you're cohabitating with. We've got a comprehensive list of how different outings and activities stack up posted now on our website.